What's going on, guys? Eric Black here, Parker Miner over there. Um, this is Rockcast. Thanks for hanging out again this week, this month, this year, whatever it is for you. I don't know. This evening for us, uh, as we record this right now, maybe it's evening for you. Maybe it's in the morning, you weirdos, weirdos that like mornings. I'm not a morning person, don't like mornings. Parker, how you doing, buddy? Well, pretty damn good. Hmm. I feel hmm. good. I don't know if it's the morning or the nighttime. I don't know. Don't I know. just know that we're all together. Yeah. And this yeah. is Rockcast. This is Rockcast. That's right. That's right. Uh, and we're going to get a little housekeeping out of the way. It's going to new thing we're we're going to start doing. We got to be professional, Parker. We have to be we have to be professional. So, we're going to if you're not following us on Instagram, Facebook, on where else are we? YouTube, everywhere. You name go, it. Go do it right now. You go got a minute. If you haven't refilled your drink, maybe get some food, some snacks. You have time. Them. You have time before the randomness starts. You got a couple seconds. Just run now. Go get it done. We we have everything we need here because we were prepared. So it's all good. Um, it's gonna be a fun show. I think it's gonna be a fun show. I forgot there's an A in there. It's gonna be a fun show tonight, guys. We've got a lot of good stuff going on. There's some. It's uh, it's gonna get weird. Uh, I'm pretty sure. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna be very mad. So we'll see what's gonna we'll see what's gonna go on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is broadcast. Now we're gonna try something new. We're gonna go to a, a, a sponsor break right now. What? Get it out of the way, pay some what? bills, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll let you know what's going on. All right, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Here we go. What's going on, guys? Eric Black here, Parker Miner over there. There, whatever. He's somewhere. It's fine. I don't, it doesn't matter. Just it's keep fine. going. It, it's all good. Listen, here's the thing. We have been sleeping ridiculously well, and this is this is not something that we take mm-hmm. lightly. This is we love our sleep. Rock stars love their absolutely. Sleep, okay, that's all we're saying. So we we uh, we came across this brand and um, we fell in love with it. Actually, after about a forty five minute nap, right, we fell in love mm-hmm. with it. It was fantastic. Um, what I'm talking about is my pillow. Yes, mypillow.com has all of the stuff that you need to fall asleep very well. Now listen, it's not just about sleep, it's about comfort. It's about comfort. Absolutely. They have Absolutely. Parker, they have pillows. They have uh Giza sheets. Mm, love uh, what else do they have? They have they have towels, Mattress, they toppers. have mattresses. Yeah, toppers. Dude, you um name it. You name it, they pretty much have it. Uh it's it's just it's not just pillows, kids. They it's even have slippers, pillows. Eric. They have slippers. Rock stars need yes, slippers. Do. I don't know if you've seen this, but Ozzy Osbourne wears slippers. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that's how that works. Um, here's the thing. Now, <clears throat> Mike has been so generous lately that he has, uh, he's actually taken his pricing down. Absolutely. Just a touch. Just a scotch, if you will. Normally, a king-size pillow would be what, like 70 bucks? Could be. Could be. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Not today, folks. Not today. 30 bucks. 30 bucks, and you get to sleep like a freaking king. That's right. It Literally. Uh, it's something like what, Parker? What did we say? Like 40, 40 bucks 40 in bucks? savings. I mean, 69.98 regularly, I believe, is the price. 29.98. That's right. Now, if you want to go a little bit further and you want to be cool like us, you can go ahead and get that king size pillow. It's just five bucks more. It's just a it's little, worth it. a little bit so more. Worth it. It's worth it. It's worth every single dime, mm-hmm. penny, or whatever it is that you are going to use to purchase those things. Either way, you're, with us, you're getting a forty dollars savings. It's nice. It's nice. MyPillow.com. You can go there and use promo code ROCKCAST for up to 66% off of your entire order. Now, there's also a phone number. You can call 800-646-5719. That's 800-646-5719. I don't know any of you that are going to call that number, but if you do, it's fine. It it's, goes straight to where we need it to go to, I guess. But I would say just, Parker, hold on, Parker's calling. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Mike, Mike answered himself. Look, Mike Lindell, look, we... Oh, you already know about it. Okay, he knows. All right, he he, knew, he knows. He knows about, about okay. promo code okay. broadcast. There we go. Does he yeah. really? Oh, that's nice of him. That's very cool. Promo code broadcast up to sixty six percent off mypillow.com. Go do it right now. It's the best way for you to support the show and support uh, a great American product. 
go do it right now. We'll wait. We'll wait right here. Just we're not leaving. You know, go. We're go still waiting. It. You're not. You're not pushing the push the numbers. No. Why you're still here? You should go and just do it. Rockcast promo code mypillow.com. Look, I need to get the number again. 800 646 5719. Why are you still here? Rockcast. Oh, All right, back. guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Parker, did you flush twice or was I, it just one time? That's what I was about to say. It was three, actually. When you have a three flusher, you are starting the day or right. evening. The right way, whichever, yeah, whichever it is that you start first. And you know, what, Eric, I've you know what's interesting? Mm -mm, I don't tell me right now. Need there's this, know. there's this new root beer uh flavor that you can pour in with your Coke, but if you mix wow. it just right, it, I mean, it's the perfect root beer taste. See the color? Yeah, it, I see the color. It is root, but it's not beer, it's like what do they call that? A flavoring? Watch. You mix I, it really good. You get a little Coke and you do this. And it's like. I call that the rich bado because that's the uh, wrong way. To hey, that's it. funny. That's funny because uh, I, I'm pretty sure I'm certain that he's actually on the show this this week. If I'm is, is he is, is he here right now? Uh, Bado? No, he's not. But rich Beto is with us isn't that right rich let's see here yep i'm here Hello. there he is there he hey, is uh, man um rich how are you doing buddy good man how about you how are you guys well you know we're not bad um so i guess that means we're pretty good we could we could be we could be worse there could be a lot worse things happening to us right now that's I guess. true so that's you know that's yeah. fine i'm gonna start this off um saying Eric, you you remind me of the guitar player from Dream Theater for some reason. John Perchusi, I think his name. It's actually him. It's me. Yeah, it's me. I changed my name. Yeah, I was sick, sick of the fame. You know how it goes. <laughs> sick of the arpeggios. Just yeah. sick of it. Yeah, just sick of it. I'm gonna. This is this is really. <clears throat> here we go. That's better. Ooh, oh, that's, that that's, sounds much better. Oh, Look at that. It's my nice. first day as a sound guy too. So we're mm -hmm. having a good time today. Um, you know, very, very professional. Very. I have looked, but I don't know how to use it. It's too bad. It's a good mic. Oh, oh man! I know this really cool guy, guy that has one of those. Yeah, I did. I know that guy too. I know man. that guy too. Uh, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Rich. You, you are. You've been. You've been in a lot of bands. Well, not a lot, but you've been doing it for a lot of years. Um, yeah. We we need to talk about about one band in particular right now. We're gonna we're gonna, I have a series I have a series of bands that you've been in. We're gonna talk about every single one of them. So this might be a three hour show. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Here, but right now I need to know a little bit about Finger Eleven because if if I'm if I researched correctly, this was about fifteen years that you uh, invested in this band and were hanging out with these dudes. Is that right? Yeah, actually closer to twenty. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Pretty wild, Jeez. man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, what are some of the things that uh, you know? Because right, because right now we're all going, <laughs> we're all going through concert withdrawals. We're all going through show withdrawals, venue withdrawals. I mean, just festival. I mean, everything you can think of. We're going through some withdrawals. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get into the mindset of remember that one time and kind of just you know block out a lot of the crap that's happening right now. Um. What are some of the cool stories, man, that you have on tour? And it doesn't necessarily have to be with, with uh, Finger Eleven. It can be with, with any of the other bands we're going to talk about. But what are some of the cool stories that you can remember that uh, just kind of stuck out in your head? Well, I, I think to begin with, it's fun. I've been out of the band now for, I'm not sure, six years, I think, maybe mm -hmm. seven. But um, because I spent so much time in the band and those guys, you know, I, we lived together for all of that 20 years. I mean, I haven't mm -hmm. talked sense which unfortunately just happens you know with bands yeah uh, but i still in some ways feel like that's kind of my identity you know like uh i feel still feel kind of part of the band because it was i was there for so long and still i mean interviews like this the band still comes up all the time and just it, you know so it's i'm not sure if they would like me saying that <laughs> i'm sure well, they on more but, I'm, uh, I'm sure though or i'm sure they're, well, they're okay not on it. this show so uh, yeah and, and look look be honest man the band grew on you. The guy, I mean, Rich has 11 fingers now. 
That's true. Oh. He does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, but it, some, uh, man, it's it's funny because there's like chapters in the band in the beginning, um, driving around in a band trailer. Um, hold on, my my wife's gonna walk by. Let's have a second. This is Sarah. Sarah, hello. Hi. Oh. Hi. It's, um, so there's <laughs> chapters. The beginning phases when we're just in a van and trailer, um, kind of meeting all the big bands for the first time, and uh, just that excitement, young guys out on, on out on the road. And um, they're sort of the middle part of the band's career where we moved up to a bus. We were doing bigger venues, headlining our own shows, um, and then sort of the third chapter when we had a hit or two, and everything kind of blew up and started doing like you know Jay Leno show and mm. all that stuff every chapter is equally memorable to me, but, you know, as we went along, obviously I think we made friends with more band guys and, you know, that are still friends to this day. And the whole life became a little less overwhelming than it was in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Daily. Yeah. Um, some things that stick out to me, you know, we've got to go to Afghanistan and play for the troops. Wow. Um, which was really wild. And some of the, you know, we toured with Aussie. So touring with guys like that, we really felt like fucking 30 years from now, I'm going to tell people I toured with Ozzy. You know? That's yeah. awesome. So, yeah, everything that happened along the way, I definitely, it was like a checklist. Wow, okay, now we played our first hockey arena. I'm like, you know, wow, we got a tour bus. Mm-hmm. Playing in. So uh, it's all still fresh in my head and uh, still super proud of it all, you know, yeah, yeah. Even, even though it's quite a few years gone yeah. past now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, now, has there been has there been anything as far as like learning? As far as like, you, okay. So you mentioned uh, a, few, a few minutes ago that you know you met a lot of good people. You met a, a lot of new bands and a lot of things like that. So I guess my question is: Did essentially you were networking at that point? So you're a new band. You go on the road. You tour. Yes, you're trying to get fans. You're trying to do. Um, you know, you're trying to, to to pay bills essentially. But you're also trying to network. Is that what I'm kind of hearing? Is is maybe networking is is key in in a band like that? I don't know if I looked at it as networking back yeah. then. Those guys, um, I'd say, were less social in some ways. Um, more social, and you know, a couple of guys were like big fans of smoking weed, and like so that attracts its own group of guys that will hang, at a, you know, in the back of a bus or backstage or whatever. Yeah. And, right. I was sort of the social butterfly with everybody, um, you know, staying on other bands, buses overnight, traveling. Um, a couple of guys in the band were really sort of, um, sort of kept to themselves, um, yeah. you know? So I don't know if I would have called it networking back then. It was more just making friends with people. Cause that was all you met. That, that was all we did was tour. So yeah. um, definitely made bonds back then that I still have today, you know? That's Which awesome. Is, yeah. So cool. Man. So how long did it take you? So, sorry. So how long did it take you to uh, when you come when you come off tour? However long that may be, is there like an acclimation uh, period of time where you gotta you gotta acclimate to regular life as opposed to tour life? Yeah, it, with us with Finger Eleven, everything happened so gradually that it was never an overwhelming thing. When we first started touring, I think all of us lived at home with our either mom or dad or both. Wow. So we came home from a lot of tours to my mom's house and i know mm-hmm. those guys so it was like as we were doing more and more i got my first apartment um i came home and just a group of people knew the band i would come home again it seemed like more people knew the band but there was never like a moment where boom i was overwhelmed by being home you know it yeah. was always which we were probably lucky to have because you know i probably missed the whole like egotistical part you know i'm yeah. still fucking physical, i'm sure but it all happened at a nice slow pace. So everything felt um, not overwhelming as it came along. You know? Yeah. Right. For sure. Well, well how, uh, I mean, you know, we thought, uh, we thought that in um, March, 2020, that this would last three weeks, maybe two months, something like that. We're still here. We're still here. We're still, we're still figuring all this crap out. Has this been, helpful in in any type of music situation have you been able to catch up on on things maybe side projects or anything like that that you've been trying to do for me yes because i was out of music for quite a few years after 
I mean, I was fired from St. Asonia and I, we, we can get right. into that like because of my addictions and stuff. Um, so I, I was not doing anything for a bunch of years. So had COVID came along last year or not, it wouldn't have really changed what was going on in my career stuff. Hmm. But I did hmm. get a band like during that time, this band that I'm playing with now called No Resolve. Um, these guys from Detroit. So I moved down to Michigan as well from Canada. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. That's had a nice amount of time to, we, I mean, we still haven't played a show together and I've been, I guess, in this band for a year now. Um, but it's been weird. Songs. Yeah. It's been so weird that you, I, I mean, you're ready to go. You're ready to do stuff, but you haven't, you can't, you just, you literally yeah, can't. Yeah. We just spend time working on songs and with, this band, we're releasing a song every six weeks and doing a video as well. Wow. Kind of pumping out. That's um, good. Content. Dude, that's they cool. will again, But it would have been weird for me to tour again anyway, because I haven't been out in about four years or stuff but, um, after St. Asonia. So I was kind of used to being. Well, <laughs> Eric, Eric and I, we haven't been out for at least 10 years. Right, Eric? Yeah, we don't. This is, we, they don't let us out of here. They, for, for very, very good reasons. We, these, yeah, these walls, man, I'm telling you, look, they, they don't play around. I can't even no. get out to go pee. We have well, built-in toilets to our seats. Yeah, there's actually, if you look up here, well, you, there's razor wire up here. Yeah. It's, it, we can't, we're stuck. We're not going anywhere. Well, I'll, uh, I'll come visit. I'll feed you guys and stuff. And, Sweet. You know, we appreciate like that. It. And if you can't make it, just send a drone. That's fine. Yes. Amazon does it. It's fine. <laughs> it's new. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. But they do the up and down to the uh, atmosphere and back down. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a weird it. Skynet situation. It we'll is. see. I'll take we'll some Cheetos. Heaven. Some Cheetos, Jack Daniels, and Coke. Absolutely. Oh, man. oh and yeah. root beer. Ooh. I heard, I heard, and this is, this has been confirmed on tiktok so you know it's true um the what are they the flaming cheetos the really spicy hot cheetos yeah if you put those in milk like cereal and eat it it's supposed to be delicious now i'm bold but i don't know if i'm that bold well i'm not that bold i would try it it's worth the try, I guess. I mean, just to say, okay, I did it. And plus, like, 500 million views. So there's that. So you'll be a star or whatever. Here's a question. If you guys were in, I'm not sure what part of the world, in Central Asia it is or where, wherever it is, but if you were there and there was dog meat, you don't have to watch the dog being killed. You're in a restaurant or you're, a, you know, would you try it? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, wow. Probably. Probably. Yeah, I probably would. Uh, I don't want to know its name, though. I'm not big on names. Uh, well, I think recently from a friend that went over there. So they, these, when you hear like a dog market, mm -hmm. I'm picturing dogs in cages and just, yeah. you know, real humane stuff. But the dogs, I guess they, they breed them, a certain kind of dogs. So you never see them. And when you see them in the market, they're hanging like a chicken skin. So it just looks like a, meat you know so right. mm. it was the impression that it was like dogs freaking out and scared but uh yeah i don't know why i thought of that I, my point was is to that i would try anything i think when it comes to food the cheetos and milk i will try anything once rich huh. hang on hang on i got them thank you thank you rich for sending these i appreciate that the yeah. drone came in handy you're welcome wow i'll, yeah, I'll snack on these a little bit where is he he just happens to have freaking Cheetos. No, they came down from the ceiling. Yeah, this has cost me seven ninety five. <laughs> it was actually the receipt. Hang on, the receipt says eight ninety five. I think they char charged a dollar for Tennessee tax. <laughs> yeah, plus tip. Metro Nashville. Wow, <laughs> wow. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get into let's get into a, another uh, another band that you were in. We've already mentioned it. And it's St. Sonia. You were in that for what, about a couple of years, right? About um, five years from start to finish. Because me and Adam both, you know, he left Three Days Grace. Right. I right. Left sort of, but I don't know if I call it left or 
gently, quietly being asked to leave Finger Eleven. The whole thing was very uncomfortable, awkward. Um, we can go back to that story after. Um, but yeah, Saint Sonia started with sort of me calling Adam and just checking on his well-being because I heard that he quit the band. And you know, at that time, three days grace were massive. Yeah. yeah. So we we were old friends. We knew each other. Um, the three days guys and Finger Eleven guys always knew each other. So it sort of from me from that one phone call, he started asking about how it was going with me and things were not going well for me in Finger Eleven at that point. Um, so it just naturally sort of happened that me and him were sort of going to start playing together. Mm -hmm. And then Mike Musha from Stain, at the same time that was happening, he, Stain were taking a break. And yeah. Mike was going to record with a bunch of different singers. So just randomly, he got a hold of Adam. He was like, hey, man, do you want to like work on some songs? So it all kind of came together. Hmm. It was all just kind of the right timing and stuff. But yeah, sure. so we did that record. And then we toured for about two and a half years on it. But I was nice. a fucking mess that whole time. You know, I was. Uh, uh, that's when I really got bad into drugs and alcohol. And I was a, a huge mess. I mean, almost dying. Mess. Mm. So, yeah. how did you? How did you recover from that? How did you get out of that uh, situation? Well, I had to hit rock bottom, and I talk about this openly all the time. I mean, I got to the point I was doing meth. Um, carrying meth, you know, to Europe and like Russia with me. Yeah. Um, I got really bad on that drug. And always alcohol was there, blacking out, staying up for days. So my playing really, you know, went to the shitter, man, yeah. during that time. Uh, at the end of that tour, the guys kind of got a hold of me and said, you know, we're just going to kind of look somewhere else for this next record and really politely said, you're fired. Yeah. Um, so from that, it got way worse. Then I went into like a big denial thing and uh, I moved down to Michigan. So the drug stuff kind of just filtered out because I was only doing that back in Canada. And when I met my now wife down here, I just didn't know how to get those drugs. So then I started drinking really, really heavily again. So I sort of had to bottom a couple of years after San Antonio to then realize that, man, I'm going to die here. I, my career is gone unless I do something about it. Yeah. So I went to rehab. I started, you know, started building my life again now to where it is now. And it's all yeah. a blessing, man. Those guys firing me when they did. Now I see that it was a true blessing. And I'm friends with those guys again now. And it's, you know. Yeah. That's happy. great, man. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to see you're doing good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. I mean, and that's, and that's the thing too. There's, there's a lot of that uh, opportunity in, in this industry. Um, unfortunately, it's, it seems to be very, very, very easy to obtain that, um, you know, in this uh, particular industry. But if you're if you're talking to people right now that mm, that may one that are just starting out in the industry, in the music industry, as a band or as a you know, it, it's not just band members. It's it's everybody in the industry has this potential to you know to do this, to get into drugs, to get into you know heavy alcohol, all that good stuff. But uh, not good stuff. That's not, that's not what I meant, but we all know what I meant. <laughs> Damn, Eric. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, anyway. Bitch. Oh, it's my first day. I just, it's, this is the first time I've ever done this. He's new. Just, it's fine. But it's, it's one of those things where, what would you suggest to these people that are just getting into it? What, what are some, what are some, uh, you know, things, to, things to watch out for yeah. that you've been through? You know, I think there's a side of it that's, awesome and fun you know for a new band to go out there and party and drink and stuff that i think that's part of it and i don't know if i'd be that you know don't ever do that or you have to be so serious all the time i mean it is rock and roll and right you know, it's part of the journey i just think at some point it kind of comes with age too you know it was around probably our fourth record when you almost become jaded to it all and in mm -hmm. some ways you are taking for taking it for granted and um I guess I would just say, watch, if you're drinking every night, you know, just maybe don't get fucking hammered every night. Right. And remember, maybe don't drink before shows and kind of remember why you're there. And probably there's a hundred other bands behind you that would love to be in your place. They're just waiting for you to fuck up. So, yep. uh, but have fun, man. Just, you know, stay away from the things. It's almost, you could tell someone that in any job, I think. Mm -hmm. a young, yeah. Tell any 21 yeah. year old, hey, have fun, but just sort of keep an eye out for this shit stay away yeah. from hard drugs and stuff. Right. But if you're going to experiment with shit, I mean, you're young, you know, it just, for me, I was an addict growing up my whole life. So it was just yeah. like, 
it was just a matter of time, no matter what job I had, where I was going to crash and burn. Yeah. Cause I'm just a raging fucking addict, you know? Yeah. 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 Man. Um, well, I guess that's, uh, that's some pretty good advice to just, just pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to your, um, you know, to, to how your attitude is all the time. Just keep yourself in check and keep yourself healthy and, yeah, I, I love that about what, what you said, Rich, man, just seeing it, your attitude, like even you notice your attitude change. It was one of those things you said, it was like a blessing, you know, that you, the, the bands, when they let you go, it was, you may not have realized it then, but now it's like, man, I mean, they actually did me a favor at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, now my playing is back to where I'm, just, you know, confident as it was before. I'm, I'm a father. I just, you know, my son's seven months old. I got nice. married. Um, I sort of made the official move down here to Michigan. So, so many blessings have come into my life. And now this new band, it just sort of appeared out of nowhere. It seems like the more you take care of yourself and the more you treat everything in life with care and try to get healthy, all the stuff starts coming back, man. But yeah, until you do, you'll just be fucking blaming everybody else. It was, you know, it's everyone else's fault. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. It's, it, eventually you got to just realize, no, all of this is my doing. You got to take accountability for it. And until you do that, you can't, you know, start climbing up again. But yeah. It's yeah. Been interesting, interesting ride for me. Except for yeah. me. I, I blame everything on Eric. It's true. He does. Naturally. It, it's factual. Yeah. <laughs> he actually does that. Um, um, so, that's, that's the addiction side of things. You know, it is a real thing, but I mean, it, it's fun too. I've had so many great, blackout fucking drunks with guys on the road you know that are just awesome memorable nights and just mm -hmm. i was on 20 something years at a certain point it catches up to it yeah 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 that's i mean it's to say it's it's uh it's not the same but i'm i'm realizing that uh the things i could do in my younger days it's harder for me to do them now for some reason apparently i'm getting older which i never never thought that was possible but apparently it is we get older as we as we progress yep but yes, uh, a lot of those things that we used to do, you just, uh, you, you can't really, it, your body doesn't want to keep up. Um, you got to accommodate your body and you got to pay attention to what's going on with all that stuff. Um, the I'm rock star. Napper now. Sorry to interrupt. I, I've become a big time napper in my. In yeah. My I'll take a yeah. nap before I go to bed. I'll nap before bedtime. That's, uh, that's good yeah. though. Hey, sleep is important, man. It is. Yeah. Very I will find time and place to have a little shut eye and I, I like a bunch five ten years ago i did not do that so right that's right he's at 40s and on you become a napper <laughs> you're, just, you're just catching up rich you're just catching up that's right that's right <laughs> oh my gosh um sorry just i've i've been looking over these uh the <laughs> our text thread and um <laughs> I can't say any of it. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't repeat any of it. So we're not. We're not going to repeat it. I was hopeful. I was looking at. it. And I was like, Yeah, we can. Nope. 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 Can't do it. Not which, is, which is fine. Which is fine. That's just going to have to be for the uh, the VIP subscription service, the premium service. Right. I'm saving that action for. Anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about no resolve, since that's yeah. the the current situation right now. I know. I know that there's not a whole lot going on due to unforeseen circumstances live music but yeah but there's there's got to be something that you're uh you know you're excited about right now with that band yeah i mean the band just signed a deal with this indie label um and and the, the plan the difference from this band to other bands is that now everything has changed with streaming and nobody you know record sales are a thing of the past so in many mm -hmm. ways these guys are sort of um educating me on how things are these days mm -hmm. This band's doing really great in that world, and yeah. I, you know, we're just constantly trying to bang out songs, and we do, the the band doesn't really want to go on tour until it's going to be worth it. So everyone in this band's really vocal. Besides myself, they have full time jobs and they're like career jobs, and no one wants to leave those jobs until the band's at a certain point. So it's really cool and it's really honest, and you know, I think it's got That's a good. real. Yeah, I think it's got a real good chance. They're, you know, great songwriters, really great guys. Um, we haven't played live, so I can't say we're a great live band yeah. yet. It oh, will be. It will be. I imagine it will be. If, look oh. who's on drums, man. It's going to be great. Yeah, right? Right? I just, I, this, it's so weird. It's so weird that, um, 
I mean, you know, Parker and I are used to going to to festivals and shows, especially around here in Nashville, um, and just you know covering events and things like that. So we and we're not even musicians. We're I mean, technically we are, but we're not touring musicians. We're not. We don't do any of that stuff. So and we're we want to get back out there. There's so many things that we want to do. We want to get back into festivals. We want to get back into concerts, go to the venues here, local venues, historic venues here in Nashville, things like that. There's a new amphitheater open up, uh, opening up here as mm-hmm. well. So now there's going to be two. It's going to be awesome. And we can't do anything. Yeah. We can do nothing. And I, the, the other side of that is too, is that when we contact these people, just to, just to start the contact, just to start the initial Hey guys, how you doing? They don't right. care. They don't care because it, it, there's nothing going on. So there, there, there are shows that are happening. They're, you know, they're slowly coming back uh, around here, and I, it, it's going to have to happen sooner than later because Nashville is a huge tourist city. So they're not going to survive long without having everything at least somewhat reopened. And it, it's getting there. You can still go to a venue downtown on Broadway and do all that stuff, but. Yeah. It's still, it's still weird. So, um, you know, once we get past that and get, get back out there, man, it's, I don't even, it's going to be like you're 14 again, going to your first show and whether you're playing on stage or you're watching it, it's going to be, I think it's going to be awesome. Maybe even Epic, depending on who you're watching. So I'm, I'm, yeah, out of all this negative stuff that's happened, I agree with you. I think shows will be, for both the person in the crowd and the people on the stage, it's going to be more amazing than ever because this has happened um, once in, you know, a hundred years. So this is such a huge thing for in everybody's lives that yeah. everything is when it comes back. I mean, even going to a restaurant is amazing now, and like sitting down and dining, just yeah. stuff, like that, you know, um, I mean, you, you think about it, man, a hundred years ago, we didn't have production like this either. It's, nope. it's right. It's it's we've had a pause longer than ever before with music that we've you know experienced for so long, and now it's like, what do we do? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's going to be awesome, and something really positive is going to come out of this. When bands do hit the road, they're going to be fucking fired up, you know. Yeah. And uh, and obviously, people coming to the shows, it's going to be epic. Is the right word? It's going to be very epic, and I. I think it will be, man. I think there's going to be a lot of cool stuff that's going to happen. I mean, festivals, I think, are going to be – there's going to be so much energy. And there's, there always is energy at a festival, um, you know, or one of the bigger bigger shows that comes through the, you know, the area. But, man, with these it, – it's been going on almost a year and a half. Well, we're, we're approaching a year and a half here in a minute. But um, of just nothing, of just dead water, just dead sound – just nothing. Nothing's happening. We did have some live streams here and there, and that's that's cool. Um, that is definitely not even kind of a replacement, but it, it if you were able to do it, if you are still able to do it, do it. Make it happen. Make it so. Um, yeah. Whatever whatever gets you out there and gets your music heard, um, you know, if you're able to do that, make it happen. But uh, we we need to bring live music back. Yeah. People people need it. People need it. And, you know, I've seen some uh, some friends of mine from different bands get really creative over the last year with the live streams. Um, Sean, the drummer of Breaking Benjamin, you know, he's opened a school, a little drum school. Him and uh, Barry from Three Days Grace do like a writing session where you can go and spend four hours with them. Uh, That's him cool. And, it, you know, it's things that never would have happened, I think, in the past. People are at home and they're still artists and they're still creative. So I agree yeah. with you stream thing is not a concert but I, it's great for me seeing my friends you know the seven dust guys did it recently it's like that's yes fucking, you know yeah. they're coming thinking with something to do yeah uh again it's something i think that will it'll make bands closer in the future because they got through this together so i'm sure a lot of bands have broken up in this time you know it's just not going to be worth it for them anymore yeah. if you survive yeah. this you know you're going to be a stronger band for it for right sure. yeah. yeah i think so well, and I feel too like uh, if you still if you still have you know a one or two album contract left with your with your label, you should be able to fulfill that. Um, given the amount of time, uh, you you should be able to write enough to fulfill that contract in probably the next six months and and be able to do what you need to do. But um, hard these oh. bands put out records last year and they just sort of. Yeah, I'm sure they were. They thought, oh, in a few months from now, we'll be back on track. You know, I know. Yep. See, they're 
record last summer. St. Asonia put out a record. Um, so, you know, that's really sucks that they sort of, at this point, got to abandon the record and start over again. So, yep. Oh, you know, man. Yep. It, it just, I mean, that's a whole other show. We could get into all of that, but dude, it, I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of it. And uh, so we, we need to get back to whatever, whatever normal is going to be. And we need to do it as quickly as and safely as possible. So, um, well, did you, this thing going before it all? Well, so this, the idea was um, we had this, we've been talking about this for years. We didn't know it was this, but we've been talking about this for years, just trying to do something. We have a radio background. So we've been in radio for, you know, a few years. Um, yep. Decided that that sucked. So we said, <laughs> Peace. Um, Peace out. Peace. And because we were doing, we were doing, I had another podcast that I was doing. I was doing more stuff with the podcast that I was doing, you know, with the radio station. So I was like, oh, this is, I'm, this is dumb. I'm gone. Um, and then, you know, Parker was in the same situation where he was, it, it just didn't seem like a good idea to, nope. to continue with, with radio. So we, uh, yeah. So eventually we uh, figured out what we were doing as well. Actually it was like um, uh, January of 2020 when we actually yeah. started seriously oh. talking about moving this forward. So this is still a very, very new show. Um, wow. But uh, the, we were supposed to be in person. Um, so we had been talking yeah. to, you know, some venues and stuff like that, that where we could, we could film at, do all that kind gotcha. of thing. And then March hit, and then everything just went to chaos. So we're like, right. Oh, cool. That's fantastic. You know, much like every band out there was like, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we made all these sets and, you know, got some extra equipment and things like that. And, yeah. um, now, now we're talking to rich. Yeah. So, so you guys are that as well. I was just talking about bands during the live streams. You guys have, you know, yeah. made it, made it. I mean, this is great. I, people really like the show. I know. And you guys are making it happen. Now you guys can do this and go to venues in the future. Yes. Just, right. Yeah. So a lot of opportunities came out of all this dark, you know, horrible shit. Yep. You know? It's yep. almost like we, it's almost like radio. We're doing it without radio. We can, yep. we can, you know, people tell you, you can't do something. It's okay. Okay. Me and Eric, you tell us that, man, we're going to, we're going to full force all the way. So, you know, we had the idea. Um, we'll, we'll end up probably going to, um, we've got a couple of venues in Nashville. that are pretty well known that yep. we're talking to. So, I mean, once it's over, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be out at shows. We'll be before yep. shows. We'll be yep. uh, hanging with the guys, the bands, whatever, you know, um, but I think it's going to be, I think you're right, Rich. I think it's going to be a cool mixture. If we can do this, even this way, sometimes um, we eventually do want to be in the same studio. Uh, we, yeah. We've talked about those opportunities, you know, with having one single studio so I can actually touch Eric, whichever side he's on. Uh, but yeah, man, we, we miss it, but it's, it's one of those things we, you know, it has COVID's brought some bad stuff, but it's also, I mean, like if you look at it that way, look at the blessings it's brought, it's brought, this show in a way we've still been able to do it so we yeah. can't complain yeah. we got rich on the show and all the all the awesome guests we've had man all of your friends and stuff we appreciate uh kaz yeah uh, for for getting us hooked up with you man so we i don't know we're yeah. grateful so yeah for sure and what's that, the hockey arena in nashville the big arena there what's the name of that bridgestone okay so years ago i got a good funny drunken story about that we had a day off we played that arena i think with evanescence oh, yeah. we had a day off there so we just we didn't you know when we used to travel on a bus we wouldn't get hotel rooms on days off we just live on the bus and parking lot so we uh spent the whole day in that parking lot getting ripped ripped drunk and by the end of the day someone got us in the black crows were playing at the rimal <laughs> yeah uh, Nice. So we went in, I don't know how we were able to do this, but we, you know, after a full day of drinking, like belligerent drunk, we got let into the show and we were standing not in the front row, beyond the front row, like where security would be with our drinks, just staring up at the singer of the Black Crows, like belligerent assholes. Wow. And nobody we just stood there. <laughs> I think, you know, we saw a couple of songs and we decided we'd seen enough. We had to go back drinking, but it's all like a party that night. And it's a, uh, one guy fell asleep parking lot that night and we will he woke up the next day <laughs> just, uh, i i'm gonna uh, let's we're about to make broadcast real interesting you just opened up a can of worms oh so, here we go okay oh, similar story rich except this was a little bit more i mean this was pre like pre 9 11 so you didn't have to worry about security and stuff like that so long time ago now i'm not gonna tell you anybody where this is at but i'm sure it still exists but there is a tunnel that leads into bridgestone arena 
Um, oh. oh yeah. There, uh, there was a spot where a friend of mine, his dad used to work either for the city or Metro or with somebody, uh, from Nashville. And, um, he told us about it. So, you know, I was 16 years old at the time I rode BMX, you know, all, fr- all of our friends rode skate park and stuff. So I was like, man, yeah, let's ride some street downtown. So we went, we found the spot. Sure enough, it was true. Uh, we didn't think twice about it because that's what you do at that age. And we went uh, down the tunnel and ended up in, there's like a, a room that has a hole in it. And I don't think it has anymore. I think it's actually fenced up, but it led into the, like one of the boiler rooms of Bridgestone arena. And you can, you can actually like climb in there. And it, obviously I was like, man, at that time, I think I did a little bit. I don't know if I did. No, I, I didn't do radio work then. So I don't know where I got that, that, momentum but i was like everybody act like you're supposed to be here and so <laughs> so we we just walked out the doors you were sure enough backstage right there at bridgestone and it was metallica and lamb of god so oh you my had, gosh you had this yeah. massive lineup of people playing and lamb of god i think was on the on the stage but metallica i i swear dude me and like four or five of my friends they can account for it we sat back there and ate turkey legs with metallica and nobody knew who we were amazing that's that's my rhyming story for you but that dude there's no way that that could happen ever again especially after all the times like all the you know everything that's going on you can't do that but well you you say that you say that unless rich comes to town to nashville and we try it yeah you guys will be welcome we'll be eating turkey legs together (laughs) (laughs) oh man oh I did a couple guys in Lamb of God recently, man. They're, they're great guys. I've always been a fan of their band, but uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to know those. They're great guys, man. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, look, when I toured with Ozzy years ago, uh, Jason Newstead did one tour with him. After he left Metallica, he did like a small stint with Ozzy, and that was the tour that we did. Wow. Yeah, and I was so, uh, I mean, I grew up being a Metallica freak. It just, idolize them and i sort of as i got older you kind of forget you know I, I still love them but you know you just become mature you're not as like starstruck with the idea yeah we have the tour jason newstead walked by and i literally i froze up like i was a 14 year old kid again and i couldn't i couldn't talk to him i was too scared so yeah. as the tour on his uh fiance or his wife I, she had a little puppy and she'd always be outside of the arena walking the dog and i would come over and play with the dog and she'd be like did you talk to Jason yet? No, I can't. I'm still too nervous. But the whole tour went by, and I never said fucking hello to him once. Oh, man. Wow. I was, I was starstruck big time. Wow. That's that's how it was with Parker. When I first met Parker, I was like, I can't. I can't, I can't do it. I can't. I, it's, I, you got to ease into it. You just we had, to, to, we had to warm him up a little bit. A little bit, yeah. yeah. For, I can see that. For various reasons. Hmm. Let okay. me ask you this before Eric gets started back on that top. Uh, no, you know what? Just forget that topic. Um, the drummer for Black Crows. Who is that? Is it Steve Gordon Gorman or is that the the Counting Crows? Uh, I think it's Steve Gorman. I don't think he's in the band anymore. Right. Um, so he, we used to work with him uh, at the same. Eric and I worked at the radio station. I believe right. he was. He does sports now. He does sports radio. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured drummer right. to drummer to drummer. I was like, maybe, maybe he knows. I don't know. But um Yeah, I but I heard him on Mark Marin podcast. Yeah. Yep. 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 So Steve Gorman, yeah, he he literally worked right in the next room from where we were at. There would be some days I'd I would see Steve in there and I'd I'd bang on the window. I'd be like I can and interrupt his like syndicated radio show, you know. <laughs> oh man. Matter of fact, great- looking back. Looking back, that might be why we got fired. It Actually, could have been. Probably on the walls while other people were on air. There's yeah. nothing like pissing people off in the next room. <laughs> oh man, it's fun. It's fun. And again, that's that's why we do our own thing now. So yeah. that's, that's what it is. They don't know how to have fun anymore. And when you start oh. banging walls and they start collapsing, uh, those you know sometimes dressing rooms in the back, in the backstage, <laughs> yeah. it's really shitty, kind of like portables yeah. and paper thin and. I remember it years and years ago, Drowning Pool and uh, Finger Eleven were on a bill. It was like a, an all-day festival. And for some reason, those Drowning Pool guys thought they were going to destroy this room. So they proceeded to do it, uh, you know, breaking all the glass in the bathroom stuff. But that went on for a little bit. And the guys in the offspring room um, next door, 
And all of a sudden, after, you know, everyone thinks they're being a badass wreck in this room, this fucking wall comes crashing down and it's noodles no. from. Oh, you yes. guys want to the room? I'll show you how to destroy a dressing room. And he's knocked oh. the whole down. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Dude, that sounds like noodles, man. He Anywhere he goes, he makes destruction happen we had New- we had here. an acoustic set with him one time and he took we didn't know what to expect it, it, it's an acoustic set nothing crazy is supposed to happen and all of a sudden you know there must have been 50 people in the room so it's like okay ukulele little guitar and all of a sudden he just goes blam and just smashes this thing out of nowhere it goes i mean it flows flying into people's faces he didn't care man it's, 14 it's just him people 14 people had splinters it yeah. was crazy it was a crazy yeah. event the ambulance bill was like Twelve hundred dollars that day. Yeah, he's got thick rim glasses, so his eyes were fine. He's not worried about. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> and Dex Dexter's too busy in the laboratory making his hot sauce. Man, he don't That's know. Right. That's yeah, right. He's, it's two planes that he owns. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh man. the The only plane I think we can finance right now is one of those styrofoam ones that you just throw. I think those we can. I think we are okay no. with those. That's, we're not. That's, we're not there yet. We need the paper plane. Right. We we can only fold planes. Yeah, and you, you can only those, fold them so much. Those Canadian rock bands, man. We just get paid in loonies and tunies, and uh, yeah, all we could afford was hockey sticks and maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> although, although to be fair, maple syrup. Seriously, right. maple syrup though. Right. It, it's pretty delicious. You know the best Canadian. Um, <laughs> Everyone says they're so polite and stuff. It's such a great thing to be known for. But I always tell people that say that to me, like, man, do you know how many fucking racist assholes I've grown up with in my life and from Canada? It's a huge country of millions and millions of people. Not everybody is polite. It's a ridiculous thing to think, you know, yep. but yep. great thing to be known for. But I mean, yeah. I, I, uh, I have met Canadians, so I know that that's, that's confirmed that, uh, not all of them are, are, are good people, much like Americans, much like every other nationality. If you actually meet more than one person, you're going to know that there are some, some douchebags that are uh, hanging out with you. So yeah. it happens. You know, it happens. It's everywhere. We're, uh, we're quite fond of Canada over there. It's uh, we like it's Canada. A fine eh? place to be. Yeah. Fine place yeah. To you be. know what? I like maple syrup. In fact, e? I'll take a shot of some syrup right now. You go. This is Mr. Butters. No, Mrs. Butters. Buttersworth. Is that a thing anymore? Nope. See, that's yeah. racist too, man. Yep. This is awful. Cancel that. All right. All right, Rich. Here's the thing. Now you said you're from Canada. How uh, we've talked to a few bands from over there, up there, up there. Mm-hmm. It's up now. Um, it depends on which way I'm laying. That's the. It's it's a long story. Uh, did you when these bands would tour in the winter? Um, it took a, a large amount of effort because winter in Canada. Um, I need to hear some stories about winter yes. in Canada and touring. Oh, man. Uh, for some reason, a lot of bands will tour in February. Why? I don't understand. Maybe you get paid more. So I'm not sure, but it seemed to be a thing. We always did. But um, it's fun. when we brought American bands with us, uh, we brought these guys. Remember the band Cold? They're still out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yes brought them across canada with us and uh i mean i think they're from jacksonville florida so they were just (laughs) and and their band name is cold right we would go to places like winnipeg and it's just you know it's like the tundra up there didn't they do that song uh stupid girl stupid girl yeah Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you know that actually one night the guitar player of that band came on our bus and we decided to do mushrooms uh, and we'd never done mushrooms as a band together ever before, so I was I was kind of freaked out about getting paranoid and stuff. Right. Um, but a few about an hour into it, this guy, his name's Kelly. He's a wonderful dude, but he was tripping out too. He thought that we were all videotaping him, and it was like some conspiracy to like we were making fun of him. I didn't find <laughs> out until the next day. Oh no! All of, that night was all of a sudden we're sitting in the front lounge of the bus, and he looked at me. And he told me he was going to fucking kill me. Oh, and he's shit. like, I, he looks like Marilyn Manson kind of guy. He just looks at me right in my face. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill you tonight. It's like wow. our friend McDiver. Oh, my God. <laughs> we you totally legit, understand. Were you legit because freaked I, out? Well, because I brought him as a guest on the bus myself, 
all the guys were like, get this guy to the back of the bus. And so all night it was just me and him in a dark, you know, back of a tour bus. And every once in a while he would just stand up and like, like motion to punch me. And I'm like, ah, cause I'm fucking tripping. Oh and gosh, was- dude, that would suck. <laughs> Good I Lord. Worked. Next wow. day we were supposed to meet up with cold and their bus broke down. So he was with us for like three days traveling with us. <laughs> oh my gosh. How awkward was that? Well, he, he really apologized the next day, and he explained, man, I thought you guys were videotaping me, and it was all some conspiracy to... Wow. Okay, well, that describes the uh, letting me know you're going to murder me. That's crazy. <laughs> that's that that's a crazy. Canadian winter tour story for you. Oh, wow. my gosh. Yeah, that's like a terror. That's like a terror uh, freaking crazy nightmare or yeah. something. Yeah. Like Rob yeah. Zombie's writing that. Yeah, movie. it was. Movie. Good Lord. <laughs> than getting off stage in Canada and if you're you know you're soaking wet and sweat and you gotta like take the hike to the bus and you get back and literally everything is like frozen in place your clothes yeah. and awful. Why not? awful awful but great that's home but awesome yeah yeah but awesome at the same time I, I can understand that I can understand that um <clears throat> Rich I, I have access to the internet I just want you to be aware of that mm-hmm. and somebody somebody it's- thought that was a good idea um, it appears that you, you are left-handed. You play drums left-handed. You do, you know, whatever else you do left-handed. Yeah. Things like that. I'm i I'm one of the few left-handed drummers out there. I mean, I'm sure there's, I know there's millions around the world, but as far as out there in the public eye, I know Phil Collins is a lefty. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it's escaping me now. Who else is? But there's a few, but not many, man. There yeah. are, yeah. So how, when you were, when you were trying to learn drums, how hard was it to, to do that? Cause I'm assuming you had to learn from somebody that was right-handed. So no, you- I, funny enough, that's not the case. I, my first drum lesson, I sat down and I don't know the difference between left or right-handed drum sets. And my teacher, Dan, he's still a friend of mine. We started that lesson. I came back, you know, every week and it wasn't until, a few months in, a kid at the music store was playing the drum set. I'm like, man, that looks so different. I found out it was me that was different. So, yeah, I had a left-handed uh, drum teacher. Back wow. That's crazy. Have you ever tried to play right-handed? Yeah, I've had to do shows. Like in when I was growing up, you know, uh, before anything serious in the business, playing little bars with, uh, you know, bands I started with. But if they had two bass drums, a drum set, I could just open a hi-hat and just use my left foot and kind of make my way around the kit. So it's possible, but it's not comfortable. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Ginger Fish, the drummer from uh, Rob Zombie and Marilyn Manson. He, he's uh, what's the word? Ambidextrous. What's the, yeah, you, that's you, close yeah. enough. Yeah. Close. He can play his, uh, his drum sets literally set up left and right. And he kind of switches back and forth. Hmm. Crazy. I, wow. uh, I just switched my mic over. Mm-hmm. To this side from this side it's messing me up messes up my whole game i can't figure it out i can't do it i'm i'm point i because i i base my points off of my mic like literally my finger my finger pointing and yeah. it used to be over here so my brain i had it this is totally dumb and it's irrelevant backwards. but we're gonna oh, we're gonna talk sense. about it he's dyslexic too i just i can't figure it out i can't i'm always i'm always pointing i don't know where i don't know where parker's at on the screen so i just like i try to cover the entire he's he's somewhere on this yeah there we go somewhere over here i don't know that is hard no idea. on my screen you guys uh well let's see here no our eric is here and uh, parker's here oh, sweet oh, parker's on the bottom that's surprising <laughs> on the- <laughs> about- rich yeah. high five or low five rich Shh. <laughs> and that's going to look really dumb yeah. later because that's not even how it's going to be. The, the, that That's one five second promo in itself. <laughs> it's due next week, Bert. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh like, my God. It's what these YouTubers do, man. That's all they do. They like in their camera segments like this. Right. right. They do that. Boom. And then there's somewhere else. And we're back. And we're back. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do that with bathroom breaks, I think. Yeah. It's already done. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, 
Well, I need to, you, you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but you, you, you recently signed a pretty big deal. We need to go a little bit more in depth if there is anything more in depth, but um, the, the big deal, first of all, I'm assuming this isn't the first time that you've signed with a label, whether it's now, when you, when you enter a band, do you have to, if they're already on a label, do you have to actually, you, I mean, obviously you have to fill out the paperwork for the label, right? No, I usually, I mean, with any band that you were jumping on board with, you'd be a, a hired guy. Okay. Because um, if you're coming onto the business, that means if you're someone new to the project, like any business, you hired a guy on, you would make him a partner in the business. Um, so yeah, these guys already were working with this. They're not a huge label. They're a very small label too. Sure. Um, but they, uh, you know, I didn't sign anything right now. I'm just playing with them, but it depends, you know, with finger 11, we started that band. So I was, uh, you know, a part of the, the whole business thing with St. Asonia. I was like a salary guy. It was Adam and Mike who did all that. So it's different. I mean, a lot of bands out there that we all know, I'm not going to mention them, but you wouldn't, you know, it's crazy how many guys are just, um, getting paid like weekly and there's like yeah. one guy in the owns the band yeah, a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. well i mean i guess that's i guess it's good for them uh whoever owns the band mm -hmm. um i mean and i can kind of understand that because that's what i do I, I, I subcontract a lot of uh i mean i'm a subcontractor so i get subbed out a lot to do various things i do video production things like that um voiceovers all that good stuff um but i never thought of that as I guess as a band, I just assume because you know when you when you start out as a band, you're just a whole bunch of friends hanging out, playing music, trying to, you know, be rock stars, things like that. I never thought about that. That it's it's still like essentially it would be like some sort of 1099 or W9 form situation. Weird. Yeah, there's you know some bands will do uh you know some bands will do uh what's it called like a privacy thing where you can't talk when you join a band, you can't talk about the uh, band or. It's on disclosure stuff. nda yeah um so you don't you don't find out you know but there's tons of rock bands that you know there's just one guy that's really running the show but if you just watch their music videos or their promo pictures it appears that you know they're a band but yep yep 11 we're a business when i left finger 11 we had to do a lot of legal stuff just to you know make that separation it's a pain in the ass and kind of gets ugly sometimes but yep like a divorce you know yeah. yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric knows about that. He still self contracts his wife out independent. True. contract. Ten ninety nine every month. True. It's true. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm she signs saying. it. She she agrees to it. It's fine. It's all good. Subcontracted. Yeah. Subcontracted. So the kids. So yeah. are the kids. Yes. So there's Must. that. Yeah. Can I have a backup plan, man? If you want to get rid of them, it's only a year. It's only a year. Every year you decide. January. Right, it's right. It's fine. Anyway, um, here's the thing: we got to talk about. We we like to play games on the show. Um, mm, this game is pretty popular with the kids, okay. apparently. Uh, according to my research, with one kid, it's pretty popular. So there's that. It's a little game that we like to call Would You Rather. And, Rich, it would be an honor for us if you would join us in this festive game of Would You Rather. You got to do it in a British, British accent, though. Would You Rather? Yes. Would You, would you Rather? Hmm. Hmm. All right. I will join in on that. Would You Rather? Parker, here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the first one. You say the second one, and then uh, maybe we'll say the third one at the same time. I don't know. Oh, we'll see. Right. We'll change it up. Okay. Hey, we well, well, before we okay, do well, that, can can Rich, could you answer in a British accent? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing before we start. I was born in Wales. I'm a Welsh guy, literally. I moved to Kansas six years old. So wow. I'll try to you know the best Welsh accent I can for you. <laughs> okay. Well, interesting. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be weird. I like it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is this is would you rather. And we've got three questions. I'm going to okay. figure out how to start the first one with a British accent, which actually shouldn't be very hard for me because that's where that's kind of where we're from. So that's true. Hundreds of years ago, I guess. So it shouldn't be that hard. I've seen a movie. I've seen a movie. 
We're good. Turn on the switch. Okay, here we go. You ready? Now this this is this is very uh, this is an intro intro question. So it's not going to be crazy. It's not going to be like the rest of them that you're going to be like, what is wrong with you people? And I I'm sorry that I came on the show. This is going to be the intro question. So this will kind of get you into the into the the swing of things, if you will. All right, here we go. Would you rather play for Puddle of Mud or Five Finger Death Punch? Ooh. Well, love, I have to say Puddle of Bloody Five Finger Death Punch, man. You know, good bloody rock band. And yeah, uh, I don't want to go to jail, do I, with Wes? I don't want to get in trouble with him at the airport, mm. do I? Tell you so, I'm going to go with Five Finger Death Punch on that, lads. Five Finger Death Punch it is. That's it. The final answer is Five Finger Death Punch. Parker? Oh man, <laughs> these accents. I, yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not an accent guy. Yes, you are. You are from the south. You are from the south. Yes, you are an accent guy. Come on. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a southern. I'll okay. do a southern English accent. How about that? Make it to the southern English. This should be. This is going to get us the clicks. This is All where it's there, at right here. There, uh, there, uh, there we go. <laughs> Would you rather, Rich? There, uh, would you rather be stranded on an island alone or with the person you hate the most? Male or female? Ooh. Oh, man. We'll let you pick that. Well, that's that's up to you. We don't know who you hate the most. So uh, it's kind of, hmm. Um, hmm. So hmm. You're, either, you're either alone, totally alone, or you're with the person that you hate the most? Uh, the person that I hate the most because I'm generally, even not on a deserted island, pretty uh, you know, forgiving and wanting to talk things out. So I'm sure that we would be buddies um, before the first coconut hit the sand. If you I were, would, if I would you watch were, that. If you were to phone a friend, you could have used the first question as a clue to phone Wes. From Puddle Mud, he'll tell you everybody he hates because he yeah. wrote a song about it. Yeah, man, yeah, no. yeah, I can do a good class accent. <laughs> do man, it. Man. <laughs> no, I won't do that. I'll make fun of him. He's a great guy. He is a good guy, well, man. He is actually. I, hey, yeah. I'm glad to see Wes doing better too, man. He, I see he's yep. actually out about to do some shows, I think, and yep. he's dude, he's on the roll. I, I've been watching him, man. I've had to drive Wes, and when Wes was. In that state, yep. that was an yeah. uh, interesting and difficult car ride from Nashville to um, the Fontenelle, which is an, a venue outside of Nashville, probably about 20 minutes out of where we were. But, man, I had to drive with Wes. Real, real quick story between the second and third question here. We're still yeah. in Would You Rather, by the way. Yeah. Um, we so never left. But I, I, I drove Wes, and <laughs> we were behind a Metro Nashville cop car. And he decided to turn on the uh, the little uh, strobe lights on top of the radio station vehicle and try and pull the cop car over. Yeah, of course sounds about right. Yep. Yep. Just yep. I'll let you know. I'll I'll just let you uh, imagine the rest of the story there. Well, and that's and that's the interesting part of being, um, <laughs> especially in rock radio, is you know you do pretty much every radio station does some sort of acoustic show before the right. the main show at, at night, whatever, and. Uh, that's where that's where we really saw who these people were and Love it. Uh, you know if we if we like them or not because usually those yeah. were generally before noon yeah oh yeah they oh, don't... I, I still loved west from that moment yeah I was like, yeah Man. but but you kind of see it you you see the real side of them oh and, yeah uh, i drove when you're, a... when you're requesting alcohol at 9 a.m in the morning there, there may be a problem. A, it was a Sunday. It was a Sunday show in Tennessee before the laws changed, and he, and Wes was like, "Hey, uh, can you run me by? Uh, can you run me by this liquor store?" I was like, "Man, maybe like twenty minutes. I'll I'll drop you off the radio station. You prepare. I'll go get whatever you need." He was like, "No, no, drop me off now." He's like, "I'll talk her into it." That was not a good scene either. <laughs> He's like, "What are you gonna call? What are you gonna call the beer police? Come on, man, just sell me the just sell me the alcohol." To be fair, to be fair, it was an annoying law. It was. It was I'm, stupid. I'm glad that it, it is done now, so it, we can we can buy it whenever like, we want. It made no sense, dude. No sense. 
So anyway. And you know, I'll just say, I mean, I know Wes. He's a great dude. I'm so happy that he's doing. Yeah, it. me too, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Real, as a guy that's gone through some real dark shit, um, you know, I was really worried about him, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of the guy, man. He's doing well. Me too. Well, yeah. and and that's uh, you know we we do we do laugh a little bit, but at the same time, it is nice to see. It's it's amazing to see these people recover and get back to normal, like yes. yourself. It's amazing to be able to have the uh, the drive to be able to do that and to say, no, I'm not going to allow this to take over me. I'm I'm done with this, and it's I'm I'm going to figure out how to make it right. And uh, it's awesome because then you know they can still do they can still get back into music they can still do all of the stuff that you know you, right. you know this, you know what's going on and and all this stuff so it's it's awesome to to see uh, how that how that unfo- uh, unfolds. Um, well, I think all the hunter shit. I mean, I in my experience, everyone that kind of gets better is always a super positive thing with everyone. People want you to get better and are yep, um, yep. like forgiving and they're, they're really rooting for you when you get better and it's, you know if you're in a band like Wes is such a great songwriter uh, mm-hmm. or when you're going through that stuff I think people can sometimes be laughing behind your back or talking sure. but when they, you're trying to fix yourself um, it, it's amazing like the positive support I got anyway it's yeah right yeah yeah well and and that's what you need that's exactly what you need in that in that specific time because obviously the negative was part of the reason why you're in that situation in the beginning. So any positive reinforcement, um, you know, is, is very much uh, necessary in those situations. Um, sure. we have, we have to finish this game. Oh yeah. Question, um, question we, three. We have a, we have a third question. <laughs> this, uh, mm, this is interesting. Um, Ooh. would you rather, would you rather skydive naked into a stadium of people or, or wear a parka the entire set, which is an hour and a half. Let's say it's an hour and a half. Headliner. In the middle, in the middle of summer, so you're outside. Mm. I guess I'd say skydiving just because I haven't uh, skydove. What do you say? Skydived? I mean, before. I've never skydove. Dove. Um, let's go with dove. The madness of, uh, of doing that would be – it would just be – not so yeah i would do it just to say i did it not uh, not to get graphic but i'm going to get graphic it seems like there'd be a lot of this going on and i don't know if i'd be okay with all of that action going on while i'm dropping 10 minutes it would be some you know it would be so ridiculous that uh yeah it would just have to be funny man uh that would suck (laughs) you'd probably not survive i think you'd probably pass out tried to play drums anyway in the sign like that you wouldn't make it to the set oh man yeah i don't i don't think so i don't think so i mean unless that unless that suit had Mm. some sort of protection some sort of air conditioner in it i don't know but what i've always to try to be honest with you is uh skydiving like with a drum set with a parka naked underneath (laughs) into a club of like six to seven people (laughs) <laughs> kind of been a dream of mine funny you guys mentioned them. that is <laughs> that's been a dream of mine for years we're gonna, I, we're gonna make that come true where's, I our, that up. where's our sponsor at for that we got something we got something for you finally <laughs> naked skydiving come to nashville we'll go get you we'll get you taken care of <laughs> uh, we'll name that sec we'll name that segment go nuts Go nuts. Yes. Nothing. I, I would I would actually enjoy seeing that. And that sounded really awkward and weird. No, we're going with it. I would enjoy seeing that because simply the logistics of the drum set. And yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing you're going probably like 50 or 60 miles an hour. I don't know. I've never sky dove. dove. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming that it's going to be very very weird i mean do your drumsticks have to have wings on them too just so they can fly through the air just right, red bull know. they could be tough, but not to your hands you know what i'm saying they could you be can't. but how, how are you going to pull the cord bro that's what you're not hearing what i'm saying they could be attached not to your hands to your finger 11 is what i'm saying and then you Put have your, your hands finger on. 11 see what i'm saying yeah see or, or you could attach the drumsticks to the actual pull cords hmm. that's right this is what the internet does not give us. So <laughs> there's that. 
streaking, man. It's always hilarious if I happen to be that person coming into a stadium naked. I mean, I've never not laughed my ass off when someone comes running through any room naked. It's always great. If there, if, if there is any scenario when, when we get back to whatever we're calling normal, if there is a scenario where we can pull this off in Nashville – we're that's it's happening that's going to uh, we'll get you here somehow you're a whole band and you're that's I'm, you're doing it that's just what's going to have okay. to happen yes parka airplane drum set uh what else do i need a crowd crowd a pair, but I, a parachute would be good uh, it, it would it would yes it would definitely be okay. good but i'm also thinking about like maybe some smoke coming off oh yeah off drums or something like that so that like, people can see i mean good time the ground and went like right as you hit you know mm-hmm. someone doing a joke maybe someone in the arena is doing a joke and as they do the punchline you learn but I think yeah i'm i'm assuming that you're probably going to have to practice that at some level so you're gonna have to jump probably like 10 times yeah you know what? We'll, we'll plan that you come down here we'll pay for it we'll do it I mean, okay. we'll find a sponsor for that that's, that's right we'll, it's gonna we'll be in chattanooga happen. chattanooga Lots of fun stories. Hey, is a haunted hotel in Chattanooga? You guys, the know haunted that? hotel. Famous. Yeah, you guys know anything about that? I don't. We're like, it's a hospital, and some guy. I don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. I, but it, I stayed. I feel like. Haunted. I feel like it is Chattanooga. I feel like that is Chattanooga. You know what? You're right because that brings me back to another memory. There's actually that okay. So there's that, and there's actually um, Chattanooga is a cool town. Uh, you also have. Um, there's actually a deserted Playboy Mansion, completely deserted, and True. you can you can actually see like the pool. Uh, the pool has like the actual Playboy Bunny tiled into it, and it's supposedly massive. People go do photo shoots, and it's just completely vacant. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. We check. should check it out. We're going yes. tonight. Yeah, we'll go tonight. That's definitely going to be googling as soon as I'm done. That. Uh, yes, that's that's actually what you're going to be skydiving into. Yes. You know what? Better yet. You should skydive down to your drum set, like you're saying, instead of doing the ch- ch- They should be ready for you and start the show as soon as your butt lands in that chair, man. Just like, blah, and then it, that's the intro, man. Yep. That's the intro. That's that's, that's happening. You do that every night on, on the road. It would be a, an expensive tour, but uh, well worth it. It's it's only $2.4 million a night. It's not that bad. It's, it's not pretty bad. pretty reasonable if if you're a billionaire. Not Not well, horrible. So, I'm just saying. We'll sponsor can, it. It's fine. We, we'll just, figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll Chattanooga it out. Skydiving. Chattanooga Skydiving. Dot com. Dot com. Go check it out right now. Oh, and I do have your plan B in case you decide last minute to not go naked into the crowd. I've got a friend. His name's Ham. Ham, if he's right. wa- if he's watching this, he will completely 100 percent agree to do this. He will do it. Uh, if it's not a naked person on stage, he will come in to the back of the venue and make his way all the way through the crowd completely naked. Oh, nice. I've already got it. Right. I'll text I'll text him to confirm. But when okay. this starts back up and we have your band come through, expect it. Nashville, no resolve, hey. right? <clears throat> yeah. Looking it's out happening. for yep. Yeah, I'll look out for ham. You know, it's not the greatest name when I think of someone streaking ham. <laughs> But uh, it's not. It's well, not. he's he's carrying a ham every he, single time. He just he carries, I, it. I don't know why. It's he his eleventh finger. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, two hams. It's his finger I eleven. So I, I think it's safe to say that Rich is never coming to Nashville. He's uh, not. He canceled that ticket last last minute. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Uh, Rich, here's the thing though. There's this. Uh, we we talked about this earlier. There's this space called online. Um. We're just finding out about it. But where do we find you online? Um, mm-hmm. Well, after you plug it in, it does like, shh, like I still have that kind of internet. But oh, yeah. 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 A little behind. It happens. Yeah, it happens. My name, Rich Beto, on both. Uh, I'm just on Facebook and Instagram, but just my name. That's okay. it. Crazy. Dig it. Dig it. I'm going to uh, Rich. Oh, and Ham, me and Ham are going to start a page together. Oh, man, I'm telling you. And you know what? Ham's good at, like, video and, like, computer stuff. He, dude, y'all would be a great team. I'll hook there you up. Right. Beto yeah. and Ham. Yeah, See? Beto and Ham. We got a new podcast. We're, you know what? We'll cross-promote. Yes. 
it it sounds like a casserole it is a delicious casserole actually (laughs) it is i don't know for the the people that can't spell ig nfb at rich r-i-c-h beto b-e-d-d-o-e b-e-d-d-o-e yes yep b-e-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-d-
Yeah. Been good time. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys, uh, check back every, if you're, if you're on YouTube, you need to get that uh, bell. Mm -hmm. That's not the actual sound. That's as close as I can get. That'll get you the notifications of when a show goes live. It's a good time. How do they do it, Eric? On the, the YouTubers, they're like, be sure to like this video, comment below, and also subscribe, and be sure to hit that little bell. Ding -ding. That's nice. it. All the influencers. That's how my kiddo does it. I like it. Dig it. All right, guys, uh, we're out. I'm Eric, that's Parker, and Rich is over yonder as well. We'll see you guys again next time. This is Rockcast. Bye.